please stand and join us in our call to worship, give thanks. Please join me in our opening prayer. Bountiful God, we gather to thank you for the blessings of our day, of faith, family, friends, and provision. We thank you for the gifts you have given each of us to serve those who hunger for you and for the essentials of existence. May we be faithful stewards of all that you have given us for the benefits of all you have created. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us now sing hymn number 92, For the Beauty of the Earth.
You may be seated. That is one of those hymns as, as I search and I say, well, just how many verses should we sing? But when I looked at each one of those verses, they're so meaningful, so incredible, because we gather here to give thanks to the God who offered us provision, offered us life, offered us eternal life. So thanksgiving is about what God has given us to be able to give to those around us. But uh, we started uh, this country uh, putting this as a, as a time of celebration, a time of thanksgiving, and I just wanted to hearken back just for, for history's sake that uh, the thanksgiving tradition within our country started in 1863. And I did want to read this proclamation from Abraham Lincoln that is dated uh, October 3rd, if I could. The year that is drawing towards its close has been filled with the blessings of fruitful fields and healthful skies. To these bounties, which are so constantly enjoyed that we are prone to forget the source from which they come, others have been added which are so extraordinary in nature that they cannot fail to penetrate and soften even the heart which is habitually insensitive to the ever-watchful providence of Almighty God. In the midst of a civil war of unequaled magnitude and severity, which has sometimes seen foreign states to invite and provoke their aggression, peace has been preserved with all the nations. Order has been maintained, the laws have been respected and obeyed, and harmony has prevailed everywhere except in the theater of military conflict, while that theater has been greatly contracted by advancing armies of the navies of the north. Needful diversions of wealth and strength from the fields of peaceful industry to the national defense have not arrested the plow, the shuttle, or the ship. The axe has enlarged the borders of our settlements and the mines, as well as iron and coal and the precious metals have yielded even more abundantly than heretofore. Population has steadily increased, notwithstanding the waste that has been made in the camp, the siege, and the battlefield, and the country rejoicing in the consciousness of augmented strength and vigor is permitted to expect continuance of years with a large increase of freedom. Now here's the, here's the sentence that really hits me. No human counsel hath devised, nor hath any mortal hand worked out these great things. They are gracious gifts of the Most High God, who while dealing with us in anger for our sins has nevertheless remembered mercy. It has seemed to me fit and proper that they shall be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and one voice by the whole American people. I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States and also those who are in the sea who are sojourning in foreign lands to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwells in the heavens. I recommend to them while offering up the subscriptions just duly to him for singular deliverances and blessings that they do also with humble penitence for our national perseverance and disobedience. Commend to his tender care all those have be, who have become widows, orphans, mourners, or sufferers in the lamentable civil strife which we are unavoidably engaged and fervently implore the inner, inner position of the Almighty Hand to heal the wounds of the nation and to restore it as soon as may be considered and consistent with divine purposes to fill enjoyment of peace, harmony, tranquility, and union. In testimony thereof, I have set upon, set my hand and caused the seal of the United States to be affixed. Just wanted to share that with you. I think it's a, it's, it's a pretty important part of our history that we are here to give God thanks first and foremost, but also to give thanks for our great nation. And President Abraham Lincoln felt it uh, important that we understand where the gifts have, uh, we have uh, received come from. It's not from us, it's from Almighty God. With joy we celebrate much, we celebrate Thanksgiving of friends, family, Salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a, it's a glorious time um, of, of celebration, even celebration of some of the white on the, on the ground because, you know, this afternoon we don't have to go out and rake leaves. 
So there are some really good things that are, that are happening. Um, uh, the joy of service, the joy of community, the joy of friends, nation, and world, uh, the joy of, of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, with us every step of the way. And this is where we give thanks and praise. Uh, in the midst of joy, there are many concerns. Please pray for those families that are just uh, struggling uh, mightily here this day. Uh, prayers also for our youth. Uh, Beth wanted me to make clear that they do need your prayers, and, and I, I promised her that uh, we have always been praying for the youth. We'll continue to do so. Um, prayers also for Marky, who is having some challenges. And are there any other concerns or joys of the church here this morning? Before we start, I'd just like to remind it, um, when you fill out these cards, if you can please uh, include a phone number. Um, if you've noticed that Stephen ministers have been doing joys and concerns, and part of our, uh, the purpose of it is that we could follow um, with you. We can follow up um, during the week with you to see if uh, we need to um, rejoice with you or we need to continue to pray for you. So uh, if you can add a phone number, that would be very helpful. Again, hands. I'm sorry. I'd like to have prayers for my brother-in-law. He's going through some medical problems, and it's been going on and on. And hopefully now maybe they've gotten to the bottom of it, and he's going to be doing okay. And his first name? Jay. 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 Prayers for Jay. Are there others? I have a joy to share. Jan's sister, Jan Kimmel, sister who just went in for the second time for surgery, has come out fantastic and in in the, the infection has been uh, caught and she's fine. She's doing well. Fantastic. That's great. Thank you. Others? <clears throat> Prayers for the uh, Farrell family and the passing of Vince. Uh, Vince Farrell. Very active in the community. Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts. Thank you. We will lift his family up in prayer. Thank you, Bill. Anyone else? Let us go to God then in silent prayer. Gracious God, as we gather on this Thanksgiving week, this time of giving thanks to you for the provision of our day, for the blessing of our years, for our salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who suffered, died, and was resurrected so that we may live to serve you even more completely. Lord God, as we gather here to give thanks, Forgive us, Lord God, for sometimes forgetting you as the author of our salvation, the author of our life, the author of all the gifts uh, that we have received throughout our years. Lord God, we, we, we do thank you for the, for the opportunity to give you glory through service to others. We give you thanks, Lord God, for the privilege of, of feeding those who, who hunger not only for food but for your righteousness. We give you thanks, Lord God, for the joy of faith, the joy of knowing no matter the darkness that may surround us, uh, your light shines even in the midst of that darkness. Lord God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us to celebrate you with all that we have. Thank you, Lord God, for reminding us that, 
that we are called to serve. Thank you, Lord God, for reminding us that, that you are in our midst, that oftentimes you are lifting us up and carrying us along our way, Lord God. Uh, we don't have the strength ourselves, but Lord God, because of you, uh, we are able to go another day. Lord God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all those that, that have full tables and share. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to offer a table uh, and food to those in need. Lord God, in this day, we lift up to you all those that are seeking your face in their lives. Lord God, we pray for your world, its leaders, and its people. We pray for our great nation. We pray for leadership. We pray for unity. Uh, we pray for leadership uh, for all those who are in office and will be coming into office. Lord, we pray for wisdom and discernment for them as well. Uh, Lord God, we pray... Uh, for our community, our community leaders. Uh, we pray for our families, our friends, our neighbors. Lord God, we pray for our schools, our teachers, uh, administrators, support staff, for our children, their parents, and guardians and friends. Uh, Lord God, we pray for those who can't be here this day, those who are, who are struggling in many, in many ways. Lord God, those who are hospitalized, who are recovering from surgeries and procedures and illnesses, Lord we offer strength uh, for them. Lord, we pray for those that, that are mourning the loss of wo loved ones this day. We pray especially for the family and friends of Lincoln Fawn and the family and friends of Vince Farrell. Lord God, in the midst of their, of their loss, may there be joy uh, with certain hope of everlasting life uh, for the ones they have lost. Lord God, we pray for those who are traveling this day, travel blessings upon them and in the upcoming week. Uh, we pray for those that, that are by their beloved side seven days a week, 24 hours a day, offering care. We pray for the caregivers. Lord God, we pray for the communi uh, medical community that they may use the gifts you have given them to make people well. Uh, Lord, this day we lift up to you June and Carol and Natasha, for Zach, for our youth, for Jay, for Tom, for Barb and Calvin, for the Spadafore family, for Warren, for Mark, for Marky, and all those others, Lord God, we lift it up to you by voice or deep within our souls. Lord God, we pray your Holy Spirit rest upon each and every one and heal their bodies, nourish their faith, set them all rejoicing, knowing that you are with them now, even to the end of the age. And now, Lord God, we pray for each other and for ourselves that we may be enlivened by your Holy Spirit to continue the good work that you have begun in each and every one of us. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who through his disciples taught us to pray boldly together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Hi, work. I'm going to find a spot right here. Ah, it's only 9.35 and it feels good to sit down. <laughs> Welcome here to church on our Thanksgiving weekend. We have lots of things to be thankful for, don't we? Yeah. Yes. We have also something that we should be thankful for, although we don't see it all the time. God and Jesus, yes, we're thankful for them in our lives. And what does this word say right there? Angels. Angels. Are you an angel? Yes. Really? No. Are you? No. No. Okay, at least you're honest. How about you? No. Not all the time. What does an angel look like? I don't know. What? Mom. They look like they're, they, they fly. They fly. They fly? Yeah. Do they have wings? Yes. Or do they have a cape? They have wings. Oh, okay. For sure. 
They're just a butterfly. Now that's a nice thing to think about. Angels are butterflies? Yes? They're not butterflies. What are they? They're fairies. They're fairies? Oh, wow. Well, we have the opportunity to be, to act like angels at Search for the Christ Child in two weeks, as Mr. Kelly told us earlier. And we're going to wear, what are we going to wear? Do you remember from last year? White. A dress. Okay. Long, long, long. A long white. Long. long white. Do you have wings? Yes. And Do, a very gold. What's on your head? Uh, a halo. Antennas. Really? No. A halo. A halo. If they're a butterfly a halo. angel, yeah. A halo. A halo. Okay. Okay. Um. Um. Okay. You can think they, about it. They look like um headbands. Okay, the headbands that we wore. Yes. Well, do you think that real angels look that way? No, I'm not really sure. What? You know what? I'm, I'm not sure. Why not? Because I don't see them. You don't see angels? No. Hmm. Okay, I was an angel. I didn't okay, we can, we can dress up and be an angel and search for the Christ child or maybe for Halloween or from other things. Um, there. I don't know. Okay. We have angels in our lives all around us, and God has, they are their help, God, pardon me, the angels are God's helpers. They come down and help us through hard times. Have you ever heard of your guardian angel? No. Okay. The guardian angel, what does guardian mean? It means, um, like, um, caretaker? Yes, someone who watches over us. May help us not hit that car. It, or slide, slide swipe that car. We say thank you, God, for watching over us. Um, there is a okay. ruffles on the... There's ruffles on the <laughs> costume. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's ruffles on real angels? No, maybe. Do you think yes. they wear clothes? Yeah. One time you said to me, you asked me, do angels eat breakfast with God? Do you, do you yes. Think, you think they eat breakfast with God? Do yeah. you think they eat breakfast with God? Yeah. <laughs> that made me happy when you said that. I was like, you know, I never thought of it that way, but I think that they probably Mom, do. Isn't that know, a great thing to think saying. about? Mama, I know and then they come down and help us. I know. I then maybe they have lunch and dinner too. I don't remember you asking me that. I know you were that. You were like two. So we have people in our lives helping us that act like angels as well. Correct? We may have somebody that we know that helps us out, right? We may call them angels. We have friends that are named Angel, right? <laughs> so we have to remember that we are not alone and that there are people and there are real angels helping us all around us. Yeah, everyone is an angel. But we can all strive to be, okay? Let's say our no, prayer. Really. Here we go. Dear God, thank you for bringing us all together here at Fields today. Help us to have a good week with our, all of our families and us traveling and the couple days we might have to go to school today, this coming week. Help us to remember you throughout everything that we do. Remind us that there are angels all around us to help us to get on track and stay on a path towards you. In the name we pray. Amen. Our first scripture lesson for this morning is from Psalm 100, which is a psalm for giving thanks. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. May God bless this reading and hearing of his word. Let us now bring our tithes and offerings. <laughs>
Lord Jesus, we give you thanks. We give you thanks and praise for blessing us so richly throughout our lives. We give you thanks, Lord God, for the privilege of serving you with our hands and these gifts we now lay before you. Sanctify them for your use. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Bell Choir. That's really, really good. We thank God for having you. 
and giving you those gifts to just ding those bells. Boy, that's some good stuff. Good stuff. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit that as this scripture is read and proclaimed, that we may be filled with eternal thanksgiving. Lord God, that we may be filled with hope and renewal. That we may be filled with affirmation of your presence with us through eternity. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord, for yet one more opportunity for us to try to get it right. Amen. Scripture reading is from the book of Deuteronomy, the 26th chapter, the first 11 verses. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God has given you, and you shall put it in a basket, and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in the office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord God, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first fruit of the ground that you, O Lord God, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate uh, with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given you and to your house. That is an amazing few verses of how God blessed the people Israel and continues to bless us. But there's a verse in there that jumped out at me more than the others. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate the bounty that the Lord has given you and to your house. To me, it seems odd that God has to add this shall to the list. You shall celebrate the bounty you have received. It would seem that that should be a a no-brainer. But for some reason, and I think God is right, that we need permission to celebrate God's bounty in our lives. And maybe we do. Maybe we need to be reminded to set aside some time just to give thanks for the blessings of our day, the blessings that, that so often we take for granted. Breathing, heartbeats, sunrises, sunsets, rain, dew. You know where I'm going. God has given us everything. And sometimes in the midst of our our harried existence, we forget to step back and give God thanks for the very lives that we enjoy. Giving thanks is our gift back to God. It is a witness of faith that confesses that we are not in charge, but by the grace of God, 
We have been showered with blessings nonetheless. We've been showered with so much in our lives. Think about the bounty. Not the ship. But think about the bounty that you have received. It starts stacking up. I started thinking all week long about what God has provided. I can't believe it. It's hard to believe what God has given to us. I think most take for granted, and especially here at this place, in this church this morning, the food on the table. For most of us, there's usually something to eat every night. Growing up, I remember bemoaning, there's nothing to eat in this house. You ever hear that? I know there was. It seemed like there was a full pantry of food, but I know there was a mom and dad who struggled awful hard to make sure that there was provision. But there are also those who cry out there is nothing to eat, and that pantry is bare. Their shelves are empty. So when God talks about giving the first fruits of our labor, it's kind of like that announcement in an airplane. Hear me out on this. You know, when you get into a plane, if you haven't been, it's an interesting time. Everybody's kind of sitting there, kind of looking at everything, and all of a sudden, the uh, steward, steward comes up and says, I have an important announcement to make. And they, and they talk about all the things and how you're supposed to fashion your seatbelt and all that sort of thing. Most of us don't listen. You continue reading the paper or falling asleep or whatever it might be. You heard it over and over and over again. But something sticks out. They say, if there is an emergency in the aircraft and oxygen is needed... Make sure that you put the oxygen mask on the children and those who can't take care of themselves before you put your own mask on. No? What's that? Put your mask on first. Well, that's going to ruin this whole story, Nancy. <laughs> now I'm going to have to shift this around a little bit. Okay. I was thinking about it all week, it's all wrong. Forget what I just said, and you're right. Okay, now I'm going to have to improvise for a few minutes here. Putting your own mask on first is a way of making sure that others are helped by everything that you have. The same as offering our tithe. When we offer our tithe first, boy, God's really helped me out on this one. When God tells us to give our tithe first, what we are doing is helping those who have the most need. When we offer our tithe to the church first, what we are doing is putting our own mask on to allow us the strength to help those in need. You can tell I don't listen to those things. <laughs> That's what a tithe is. A tithe is what we give out of our bounty to care for those who cannot care for themselves. And saints, that is a gift. To put someone else's needs above our own. It's a gift not only to those we serve, but especially to God. Often thought about that tithe and what God is asking of us compared to what God has given us. I think about the church. I think about the church, how much she has given to me and I'm sure you, to my family, to the community, to the nation and the world. 
When I think of those things, I just fall to my knees and I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For as much of a bum that I am, you have given me more than I deserve. Thank you, Jesus. That's what Thanksgiving is all about, is acknowledging where our bounty is coming from, where our strength is coming from, where our redemption is coming from, where everything is coming from. That's why we gather here in this place to give God thanks for that bounty of eternal life. I never needed, I will confess, a lot of food in my belly. But the church knew that I needed to be fed. Ever feel like that? And God feeds us and fills our cup to overflowing. And it just keeps getting more and more and more. It's like around the, the, the Thanksgiving table, and you keep passing stuff around. You know you're trying to eat. Here's some more. Here's some more. And it keeps coming and coming and coming. Well, that's what God's grace is all about. It just keeps on coming and coming and coming. And, and after a while, it may turn to be a little bit automatic. We take for granted that the turkey's going to come around for the fifth time. We take for granted that there's enough gravy on the table. We take for granted God's gifts. Because they just become automatic. Maybe that's where the you shall celebrate comes in. Maybe we have to be told sometimes to celebrate God's provision, to celebrate God's bounty. God knows how often we forget. We just need a reminder to slow down every once in a while. We just need a reminder, uh, maybe a you shall once in a while in our lives to say, where did all that you have come from? came from God, right? Everything comes from God. Even in our darkest times, God's grace comes in the midst of that darkness. And that becomes light. We need a reminder to slow down and look back. of all that God has done in our lives, but not only our lives, but the others. And the other part of that, that verse which, which stuck, stuck me, you shall celebrate with the Levites and the aliens of the land. In other words, it's a big table. Everybody is invited to the Lord's table. That's enough to give thanksgiving for, amen? Everybody is invited to God's house. Everybody is invited to take some more of the grace that is continually being passed around. So God invites us all to celebrate, or what I'd like to say, party. But party in the Holy Spirit. To celebrate the bounty we have received and use that bounty not for ourselves, but for the glory of God. God wants us to celebrate. Remember Isaiah 1? I think it's verse 17, 16, 17, somewhere around there. And God is saying, I can't bear your solemn assemblies any longer. You know why God said that through Isaiah? Because God said, you ought to celebrate me because I've given you so much. I can't bear the solemn assembly any longer. I want you to feel the joy of believing. That's what it is to give thanks to the Lord our God. God wants us to enjoy the fruits that we have received. For our thanksgiving celebration and the celebration of God, celebrating the joy of the Lord 
and a dear friend of mine who always continually said, just brag on Jesus. When in doubt, brag on Jesus. Brag on Jesus with the bounty that we have received. Brag on Jesus with an outstretched hand to those in need. And remember the God who brought you out of captivity. Give thanks with a grateful heart. And may this season of thanksgiving be for you a celebration of your faith and the gifts that you have received. May it be a time of remembering and being reminded of what God has done and continues to do in your thanksgiving. And by the way, let's make it 365 days a year. Let's celebrate every day. In your thanksgiving, may you be a blessing as you have been blessed. Let the people of God say, Amen. Now let us stand and sing our hymn of imitation. Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all now, even to the end of the age. Amen.